all y'all doing all this talking, talking about you going to leave the country if Donald Trump becomes president. Well, hold up. Do y'all even have a passport? Let's talk about it, my brother, my sister. If you want to become an expatriate, yes, that's what it's called. Then keep it right here. First and foremost, for everyone who has ever moved to a different country, there are just four ways that they got there. As a student, working for the government, as a private employee, or they just packed their bags and left, which I'm thinking that's probably what you're planning to do. But if you traveled outside the country at least once, I mean, one passport stamp, that's it. You'll notice the value of that navy blue passbook, which you may not be so quick to give up when you see how people with other color passbooks are treated. But anyway, let's proceed because you may not even have to do that depending on where you end up. Okay, so first, let's talk about being a student. Mind you, you can be a student at any age. I would argue that this is the easiest and least risky move to make it to another country. If you're a student now, apply for a semester abroad or even a full year just to test the waters, you know what I mean? Okay, so it doesn't matter what your degree is in, it could be humanities or aeronautical engineering, just figure out the funds and go, you know what I mean? And by the way, they're doing all of this talking about during elections about free college here in the US. Did you know that many European countries actually offer Americans free college? Like they actually pay you to go there? Off the dome, Berlin, France, Norway. Google it, dude. It's the least you can do. Okay, for the government. I'm not talking about enlisting in the military, which is one way that you can go, but I'm thinking you're here because that's not what you want to do. So for a government contract job or working for a company with a government contract job, um, this can be one of the most gravy ways to do it if you can swing it like the benefits like if you get there they're likely to pay for housing give you per diem and that's all separate from your salary you could also become a diplomat yeah you can it's a matter of passing a few tests and training i mean they're not easy tests and it's not easy training but you can do it no one's born a diplomat some actually wrote that to me on twitter that they thought uh that people were born into diplomacy roles and um they did that on twitter which means it's public and also, I imagine that it would be a hit at bars, like just as popular as if you say you worked for NASA. I, I dated a guy who worked for NASA and it was pretty cool to say that my boyfriend works for NASA. So I'm sure that works the same way for being a diplomat. You can also find a full-time job overseas in a field that you're in. And we all know many folks who have taught English abroad as a second language. You can find a full-time job working in any country you like, especially if you have English because there is a need. You just have to search for what works for you. Now, if you already telecommute, then uh, you pretty much don't have an excuse as to why you're not moving to another country. You can figure it out because you can literally live anywhere, right? So the other way to do it is that you can volunteer, but I'm not really recommending that. I'm actually just saying this out loud so that you know that I know that's a way to do it, but let's be serious. We gotta get that paper. And then finally, you can just run away from home. So those are the first steps. Here are some other things that you probably wanna consider. Does the country that you wanna to go to even want you? The easiest way to figure out if your passport will allow you to visit, let alone move to another country, is to check the US Embassy's website. Searching according to the country you're considering, you will see warnings from everything to health, to conflict uprisings, and it's, they also have a cool and handy app for that. And if you really want them in your business, you can tell the US Embassy every time you leave the country and where you're going. And that could be helpful if something like, I don't know, like a war breaks out, they can email you, give you a heads up, and sometimes even text you. You also wanna make sure that you have the proper visas to get in and stay in the country. Sometimes places will only let you go there and visit for like 30 days, man. So then you got to go. So how unfortunate for you if you didn't do your research and find out from the US Embassy how long you can stay in a place that you thought you were moving to. Oh, and you know, you really can't go anywhere if your passport expires in like six months. So make sure that you are always renewed and have plenty of time and plenty of pages in your book as well. Next, are you cool with their language? I mean, don't be that American. You know, that American. Hey, hey, 
Do you speak uh, English? No, this is France. We speak French, which by the way, really happens when you go to France. If you move to a country, that means that you are signing up to be a part of their community. So do your due diligence to immerse in the culture, learn the language, instead of that colonialistically impeding your ways onto them. That can be very, very uncomfortable for you because those people ain't studying you. Also consider the cost of living. Let me tell you, sister, let me tell you, brother, Norway is high, London is high, Germany can be high, Rio de Janeiro can be high, but if that's what you can afford and you can swing it, go ahead. But you wanna know where there are clusters of expats from all over the world? Southeast Asia, baby. Thailand, Vietnam, all of them are very, very cheap places to live. The dollar goes very far there. Also many places in South America too. Now, what about the weather? I mean like the climate, 365 days of the year. Like, so I'm from the beach and I struggle during the winter. Like really, really, it gives me the blues. So I'd love to consider moving to a place like Scandinavia, mostly because the men are super hot. They're like the descendants of Vikings. So they're brute, they're tall, like two meters. Okay, come on. Two meters is like six feet, five inches tall. You're gonna have to learn the metric system, by the way, if you leave the country. Literally, we are the only people who use feet and inches and pounds. Anyways, two meters is about six feet, five inches. But anyways, back to the weather, I have a friend who's lived in Norway for like four years and he said he's literally seen snowfall every single month except for July. All I'm saying is consider the weather. I'm just gonna throw in that you should consider your hobbies too because if you're heading out on your own, you're definitely going to get homesick. If you're gonna head out even with a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you're still gonna get homesick. So you at least wanna to move to a places where there are things that you are sure that you like to do for entertainment. Health. Okay, so back to the US Embassy's website. Make sure that you get those shots that you need that will all be on the website, their recommendations on if it's gonna be a place that you need to get like 17 shots before you move there because your little tail will be trotting back here to the country for that Obamacare if you get sick. And that's if you're lucky. I know a friend who got malaria in West Africa about a few, maybe like six or seven years ago. And she was so sick that they couldn't even ship her back to North America. They couldn't even ship her to Europe. She survived luckily with the care that they were able to give her there, but she got sick overseas. And it was mostly because she didn't get the right shots. You still gotta pay your taxes, homie. So until you are no longer a citizen, which I warned you about giving up that blue passport and the consequences that can come from that, But unless you give up your passport, you still got to pay Uncle Sam. You better pay what you owe. You can be fined for failing to report foreign bank accounts containing $10,000 or more. And that's all I know, people. You better seek the advice from your accountant. I'm just here to give you the warning. With that, you better understand the currency. I mean, the exchange rates for some countries can literally change several times a day. So chances are that the money that you make, you will still probably be getting paid in dollars if you work for an American company. So get cheated once or twice on the exchange and you'll learn, you'll learn. So I'm gonna end this with a good old fashioned packing tip. Don't forget to bring the right adapters for your electronics. Um, and electronics with motors, you want to pay attention because the voltage is different in every country and that will just blow up your stuff, right? So make sure you have the right adapters, do the research on what it will take for your electronics to work. Um, I have tons of packing tips on this channel and on our website, daily-affair.com. So make sure that you subscribe, like if you like this video, share, comment, because a lot of y'all keep talking about leaving this country, but do you really know what it takes? And this is just scratching the surface. If you want me to do a follow-up to this, if you have any other questions about what it takes to become an expatriate, then let me know in the comments, on social media, on Twitter, on our Facebook page. I will be happy to answer those questions for you. And if I can't answer them, I have friends who have left the country and they can answer them as well. Till next time. 
Cheers to the journey.